Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome today to our webinar on one enterprise system gain efficiencies using Dynamics X and Dynamics CRM. Uh, my name is Dane Kopke. I'm the Director of Business Development here at Green Beacon Solutions. Before we get in, a few technical uh, things I want to go over. One, if you are uh, actually a presentation in a large room showing this uh, to a larger group, the best way to maximize your screen is by pressing F5, and that will maximize the viewing screen so you can see everything on one, uh, on one platform. Also, let you know this is going to be recorded today. Um, so for later on, if you want to review this, or if you have other people in the organization who can see this who can't come in, it will be recorded. Also, you may have also noticed is that the phone is muted outside of the lecture mode, um, so we should not hear any uh, disturbances during the call. However, if you could do, in addition, just mute your local line, just in case. But I will allow everybody to unmute their line later on to ask questions, which we will do at the end of the call. Um, you will notice on your console for live meeting, if you do have questions that you want to store in there and then we'll ask, answer those directly after the call, you can go to the Q&A console at the live meeting and put into your questions. Otherwise, we'll open up to the floor at the end and ask some general questions about what you saw today as far as content. So again, this will be recorded, so if anybody afterwards wants to see this, they can come and actually see the recording. Again, if you have any technical issues, whether the con call goes out or you have a hard time hearing me, um, or the, you're not able to see the screen, please email Brian Miller, which is simply bmiller at greenbeacon.com, and Brian will make sure you're back on and figure out the technical issues as we go forward. So again, we are going to go through lecture mode here, uh, about 40 to 45 minutes worth of presentation, and then open up to questions, again, being recorded, so for later on, you can look forward to it. Again, gaining efficiency is using Dynamics AX and Dynamics CRM. The agenda, a uh, little bit about us, and then give you an overview of the product, and then obviously a demo of CRM. And then we're also going to compare and contrast CRM options, as a lot of people have asked us to compare it against AX CRM, which most people have uh, inherently in their internal systems with Dynamics AX. Talk about some integrations, case studies, and then talk about next steps you can do with pilot programs, uh, purchase options, and how to move forward with trials um, around Dynamics CRM. Again, your speakers today are myself, Dane Kopke, as well as Yvonne Kurtev. Yvonne's our Director of Delivery for CRM and is involved with both our product and delivery teams for Dynamic CRM. So just a little bit about us for those on the phone that don't know about us. Uh, we've been established since 2001. Uh, we're based up here basically in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, we do have offices in New York and Philly and Houston, but we do work around the country in both CRM and AX. And we've been a, a President's Club member as well with Microsoft. Again, a little bit about our experience. Uh, the only two products that we do represent in the Dynamics family are CRM and AX, so I think we're uniquely suited to top this discussion. As we've been having this discussion for about three or four years with the Dynamics AX base uh, through our own webinars as well as AXUG. Uh, Dynamics CRM, we've established a pra practice since the product began. Uh, we're part of the product advisory board um, with the partners for Dynamics CRM 1.0. We've worked with the product since then, um, and obviously on its current version of 4.0. And we have over 15 people and in our organization with levels of experience around dynamic CRM. However, our experience goes well beyond our, our company establishment as we've been working with CRM since mid-90s with products like Onyx, Siebel, and Pivotal. So we not only come to you as dynamic CRM product experts, but we come to you as CRM business prospect, process experts. From the dynamic AX standpoint, we've established that practice in 2004, right about when Microsoft bought the product, uh, and have over 30 Dynamics customers working around the country with them, uh, over 25 plus delivery team, and we also have a unique practice of managed services where instead of just doing consulting, we actually have an established managed service practice where we can become your escalation team post-implementation for everything around AX as well as FRX, uh, SharePoint, SRS, and SAS. Um, so really so supporting your entire static application around Dynamics AX through a service level agreement uh, in our managed services practice. So first I want to give you an overview of Dynamics CRM. Um, as many on the phone, or everybody on the phone, obviously, is a Dynamics AX customer, uh, Dynamics CRM is Microsoft's offering in, in the CRM space. Again, been around since 2003, but I want to give you a first overview of the product and what it really entails as far as deliverable and content uh, to your organization. Before I first want to start uh, with my little typical Dilbert cartoon, is really around CRM systems and kind of give the baseline for everybody on the call of what you need to look at, whether you're looking at Dynamics CRM or any CRM system to add to your organization, Kind of take what you evaluated when you decided on an ERP. You often look at functionality, pricing, same things you're going to look at CRM. 
But usually user adoption was way down the list. Again, you're looking for the functionality of ERP. You know, if you're an AP clerk or production manager, you, you couldn't do your job unless you used it. So usability wasn't really a high criteria, although it was often criteria. When you look at CRM, you've got to flip that paradigm a little bit and consider user experience to be your number one reason for implementing CRM and the success of CRM in your organization. I've seen some great CRM systems built through prototypes and pilots, but never be used because they never had the users adopt the flow of their business and be able to work within the application, whether that was sales, marketing, or customer service. Again, as AX customers, you often come and say, we're over-customized, we've done too much to our system. Well, Dynamic CRM is so flexible that they're, they're telling you to customize the solution for your business. They don't want you to change your sales process, your marketing, your customer service. That's di that makes your business different. So again, when you looked at AX, you often had to customize things and look at it as often the negative or some you had to do out of the box. Dynamic CRM is this open platform where you can adhere to your business processes, not the inverse. Look at dyna Dynamic CRM in the power of the product. Dynamic CRM 2011 is a new release that's coming out early next year. 4.0 is actually in the marketplace right now, but today we're going to be talking about Dynamic CRM 2011. Again, using the concepts of Microsoft and making things familiar, user acceptance around you know, connecting your business, around your applications, working within your Office framework, your Exchange framework, and as well as your Dynamics AX framework. And obviously working both online and on-premise is the options that you may have as a, product, as a customer. Again, to give you an idea of the product, it's only been out seven years, but for the past few years, it's been in the upper right-hand quadrants with both Forrester and Gartner. So you know you're looking at applications that sold in nationwide and international organizations, including SAP and Siebel and some of the, the legacy applications in the marketplace. Microsoft CRM is really well positioned and is a really robust system. It also gives you the value of the R&D effort Microsoft has put in the product since it's released seven years ago and continues to put in the product um, going forward and see how it moves, up the, it moves up the chain very, very quickly. So again, very well-respected product in both the research and obviously the marketplace itself. Now, we look at the overall product of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. Um, there's a couple of different ways to access the application, through Outlook, through Internet Explorer, and through your phone, obviously. But as Dynamics CRM is an application itself, there are three main functionalities which are classic CRM components, sales, customer care, or customer service, and then marketing or marketing effectus. And then also um, Microsoft CRM has what they call extended CRM applications. Um, so Dynamics CRM, as it's noted, is a customer relationship management system. But within the product itself, you can extend the application to manage things like employees, suppliers, vendors, customers, any kind of relationship your organization has internally or externally and manage those through the application. So you can extend it to so not purely be CRM, to be, but to be supplier chain, partner management, anything you want it to do, and really be a full capable solution for your front office. And again, it works on a technology that relies on relationships, interactions, you know, capturing every touch point you have with your customer, whether it be phone, email, social media, for example, portals, face-to-face, uh, -face, trade shows, capturing all those interactions uh, as easily as possible with the application. And as I mentioned earlier, the two uh, flavors of the solution come either in the cloud, online, or on-premise. However, the code base is similar. It actually is the same code base in both products. So we all kind of cases of customers that went online and then afterwards determined they wanted to bring on-premise, and it was a simple transition over. So you're going to the same exact code base, so you will not use functionality when choosing one over the other. So we'll look at the sales productivity suite within Microsoft. Um, we're looking at the ability to do classic Salesforce automation, managing your opportunities, your sales processes, activities, um, who you're calling, uh, call lists around doing that, the relationships between your customers, the organization within the customer you're prospecting, uh, what you sold to them, what you're actually quoting to them. All that type of stuff is captured in a 360 view of the customer within the sales productivity tool. Um, it also gives the visibility to the management team to see pipeline, and be able to be, look at applications and users and what uh, opportunities are out there and manage those pipelines as a management team. Again, great effectiveness is implemented properly with user adoption so that the sales management team can actually see the opportunities in pipeline whenever he puts it in the system. Um, so really working around managing those channels. Customer care, uh, again, classic customer service, being able to capture issues with your products or your services that you've had, escalating those issues, having a knowledge base in which to respond to those customers, be it whether it be email, phone, portal, uh, having them come in that way and ask issues and questions as well, and classic customer care and being able to escalate workflows uh, for certain issues and have alerts so that when certain products come through, there's teams that are evaluated that manage those product issues. 
And again, marketing effectiveness, my leads list, my campaigns, my events I'm going to, managing the effectiveness of the event, tying in the opportunities and the customers all the way back to the event in which they got organized with your company, whether it be a trade show, like I mentioned, or a campaign. Again, using CRM to manage your full life cycle so that you can look at the effectiveness from the very beginning of a suspect all the way through to one of your best customers and, and going all the way through marketing, sales, and customer service. And again, talking about extended CRM, uh, really going out besides the CRM marketplace and looking at things like partners, suppliers, employees, recruits, um, being able to manage that within the application, a very flexible solution to be able to add entities and fields so that you can manage everything you want into one complete solution. So at this point, I'm going to turn over to Dynamic CRM. Again, uh, for those before I bring it over, we are going to be looking at Dynamic CRM 2011. Um, 4.0 is the one on the marketplace right now. The product you're going to be seeing today will be released early next year in the online format and then in March on the on-premise format. But we've decided, um, since we are part of the beta team and it is out right now, to really present you today in 2011. As most people on the phone, by the time they go through a decision process, will be designing and implementing the 2011 product as is the first 4 r product. So let me just bring up the application here. Great. So as you can see, this is Dynamics um, CRM 2011 in Office 2010. So only the best here for everybody on the phone. Um, so you see the classic tool, moving toolbar of the Office products. Um, up here on the left, you see the home page, what you typically would see on a forward message. You see some icons which come back to you around track and setting uh, issues in CRM. CRM's got its own toolbar, which has been added to the Outlook product. Um, so you're looking at Outlook right now. You've got your classic inbox on the left-hand side. You've got your favorites. Again, nothing new to anybody, but you do have a menu down here of all the CRM uh, entities within your organization that you can access. Um, and we'll click there right now, as so I will go there later, but just give you basic navigation. Again, either accessing here before your inbox or simply going down here and pulling up your CRM application. So again, I'm a salesperson, as I always am, and again, we like to do the least amount of work and put the most amount of information in. But I want to be able to go in here and work in my day. So I just got an email. I'm Dr. John Lucas, who's the uh, owner of this application. I just got an email from Dane requesting more information. So I'm simply going to open up the email from Dane. I'm interested in your products and some time where we can talk. Great. Now, we do know that uh, Dane is actually one of our customers. He's worked with us before, so we already know that at this point. But what we want to do is be able to track this email and this interaction back and forth uh, with Dane and I around what he's asking for as far as products. So we received this email. What I'm actually going to first do is you see in the top nav ribbon bar here is the ability to track it. And so now this email is going to be tracked within CRM. Um, you can see at the bottom here it's going to be related to the records of uh, Dane, the client, and John, who's, who I am, as well as the regarding. Now, you have the ability um, to also set regarding. It could be regarding an opportunity, account, a case study, I'm sorry, a customer service record, a marketing uh, campaign, anything like that. If you do not check set regarding, it automatically ties it to the contact. So right now I just want to tie it to the contact, uh, which is simply Dane Copy. So that will be registered right now. So great. I'm going to reply to Dane. I'm simply going to set up a meeting with him. Again, we'll be tracked, and I'm sending it over to Dane. Um, so I'll send that out. And what I'm also going to do at this point um, is that you can see that I sent the email out. It's being tracked within the application um, as well. Is I'm going to convert this email to an opportunity um, because we're going to talk about a product with this customer. So you can see simply with any activity you receive, especially emails, you can convert it into an entity within Dynamic CRM. So the customer is going to be getting copy of the currency, the source campaign. Um, you have the idea of the ties to the source campaign that you can look up the record, um, and we know that he got this from the product launch. Because he happened to tell us, and we happen to know that. It's going to create a new opportunity, it's going to close the email form, and record a closed campaign response, uh, which we can all do right now. And as you can see, it automatically opened up a CRM record around the opportunity I just created. So now I have, now I'm in actually in dynamic CRM within Outlook. I have the opportunity going through here right now. But I am going to go back to the application here 
and I'll go back to the opportunity, and I want to, for you guys to see, I'm also going to set up a calendar appointment for next week. So we're going to have a discussion, and we're going to invite, and we're going to track this as well. So again, we're going to set an appointment for 11 o'clock on the 9th, and I will send it anyway because I don't have a, a location. Great. So before I close out of Outlook, as I'm going to do most of the demo in Internet Explorer going forward, I just want everybody to note, um, again, where the activities are, where the ability to use CRM is down here. You have the inbox, you have the ribbon bars, and you have the ability to work around at this point. So this is where I want to show an Outlook. But I'm going to spend the most of my time going through Internet Explorer. Again, everybody on the phone, this is CRM 2011 beta. Um, so I'm working around some of the things that I know are hang-ups, but obviously this is a beta product, so I'm working through the application um, as well. So um, I'm actually going to open up um, One more thing before I actually go is that when I relate the directive to Dane Kopke, you're going to see uh, all the activities and opportunities, um, the closed activities, which are the emails I sent. There you see the campaign response, the email response, as well as you've seen um, some of the things are already done. So again, it's been tracked in the application. You see the email that's sent out. Uh, you see the activities coming up, which will be the appointment that I just created. Again, you see the appointment that I had for 11.9, for which I just set up. Already captioned CRM, tracked within Outlook, right out of the box and working through it. So again, let me close down the Outlook application and open up Internet Explorer. Again, your, your customers, I mean, sorry, your users have the option to use either interface. Me personally, I'll just let you know I like using Internet Explorer. However, I can't track emails as easily, obviously, as you can with Outlook because it's tied to Exchange. But here, very similar look, right? You've got the toolbar at the top. You've got your left-hand nav. Very similar to way of looking at Outlook. Obviously, you don't see your inbox, but you've got a basic view. So here's my landing page. You can change what you're landing on and that sort of thing. This is my workplace. So this is my, I'm a salesperson. I've gone in here, and this is where I land into. You see the dashboards. You see my calendar items. You can see my accounts and customers. I can navigate down to sales, uh, which is where I usually live. I can see my open leads. I can go to marketing. Again, you can see your leads, contacts, marketing campaigns, uh, marketing list campaigns, and go to customer service and work within that as well. So again, your calendar, you can see your knowledge base, the contracts you have with customers. Um, so again, classic sales, marketing, and customer service. But I'm a salesperson here. So I want to be able to use this application as a sales uh, individual. So again, I have my open leads. I'm first going to go to my opportunities. And these are my, all my open opportunities. I have the ability to then select downward and choose other system views that are available to me or can create my own views um, down below, like opportunities closing in the next three months or claim personal views that you use regular on a regular basis. But I'm going to keep my open opportunities that's going on right now. Again, these are all the opportunities I have out there, certain estimated revenue, ratings. You know, you can change the columns in here, what you want to see. But again, basic information. I'm actually going to open the opportunity I just converted from my email from Dane. And again, I'll maximize this so everybody can see it. As you see in the opportunity screen. Now, I do realize this is out of the box functionality, seeing every field that's available out of the box. Depending on how you're designed or, or diagnosed within your organization to set up CRM, you can add fields, remove fields, move them around. Very flexible environment. But you are seeing the out of the box locations of fields, um, which for a lot of people may seem like it's too many, but you can definitely take a lot of the things and add them and move them down. You've also maximized and minimized parts of the opportunity you're looking at. But you want to go to the top here and look at some general information that's going to be familiar to you as a salesperson. You have a customer. I'm the owner. Again, if I put revenue in over here, I can estimate the revenue once I provide a product. I have the potential customer record. I have the source campaign it's been tied to. So, again, tying back the marketing all the way through. I have related activities, um, which I have in the last 30 days. If I do the next 90 days, you'll see that I have a task coming up, which I'll explain in a minute. You've got notes. You can add quotes, preferences. Again, this can be as minimal or complete or exhaustive as you want to be as far as what you're seeing in the opportunity fields. On the left-hand nav, you see in those same sections I just denoted, as well as you see activities, closed activities. The idea of, uh, well, relationships is going away, but the idea of connections. So you could have an opportunity tied to people outside or inside the organization that they're working with you, um, as well as 
opportunities within accounts and contacts so that, you know, you have an accountant who is the accountant for two of your customers, being able to tie those relationships together and sell and cross-sell and cross-market that way. So what I want to do is go back to the general tab, and again, seeing the information that's going through right now and seeing the source campaign, is you're going to note two things uh, that happened when actually I created this opportunity. It's one at the bottom here, it became a pipeline phase of qualify. And also what you're going to note over here is if you go to activities, you're going to see an activity was created to me. You wonder why that happened. Well, as I mentioned earlier in the, um, the program today, is actually that there's workflows involved within dynamic CRM. You can go in there and create certain workflows around sales processes, marketing, support processes. You can make workflows yourself as a person. You can make system-level workflows. Uh, again, empowering uh, users to do their own uh, workflows. In fact, I've done a couple workflows, and they're simple if-then statements. You add fields. There's no coding involved. It's a way for me to work my activities, work my sales processes. But you can see this is a system-level sales process, which is tied to this opportunity. Uh, so automatically created a sales a pipeline phase of qualified, and it created an activity for me to complete. Once I complete this activity, it's going to move me to the next phase. So you can lock down or make as fluid your sales process or any process you're putting through your workflow um, as well. So you notice the processes down here, the workflows that are tied to this opportunity are the sales process that's created um, at this point. Again, workflows are available throughout the system, and these are the same workflow foundations you're available to in Dynamics AX. It's the same Windows workflow foundation. So again, going back up to the opportunity, great. I have everything I will work with right now. I'm actually going to go off. I'm going to talk to my customer. I'm going to try to have that meeting with them next week and work through my activities. But again, as a salesperson, I've done what I wanted to do. I captured the information, took the email, retracted the email. We were able to create an opportunity out of it. And now I have the ability to do whatever I want with it as far as move it forward, move it in the sales process, create meetings and activities, and then give visibility to other people in the organization, especially my sales management team, who's going to want to be able to go through and look at the pipeline of myself and my other sales team members. So at this point, I'm done, but now Yvonne Kurtev, who is our sales manager, really wants to look at our pipeline as an organization and figure out where we can make better business decisions and how our sales is moving forward. Thanks, Jane. Let me adjust my sales manager hat. Okay, so as a sales manager, um, I need to be able to, uh, I, I need to have the system answer some very important questions. The first question is, what is the health of my pipeline, right? So we show how we guide opportunities through a specific sales process and we assign stages and probabilities, but how does this look overall from a systems perspective? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to exit this opportunity screen, and I'm going to go back to my main uh, CRM screen. Uh, so I'm going to start by examining a couple of dashboards. Uh, I'm going to go to the workplace section, and there's already a dashboard, dashboard for me, but this is just a general overview of the system. As you can see, it provides me with some sales pipeline information, also with some uh, uh, marketing information around the source campaigns for deeds in the system, and also some uh, service information. But now I'm more interested as a sales manager in the sales performance dashboard. So we pull that dashboard up, and what do we see here? So now we, have, we see a nice... Uh, large uh, chart of uh, my pipeline, and it's structured uh, as a pipeline the way that uh, most sales managers would like to see it, and I can see uh, in each stage uh, how much uh, revenue I have, and this is all driven for the current uh, uh, fiscal period, which would be the, the last quarter of the year. So I see that the overall my, my sales pipeline looks pretty good, right? We're looking to have more opportunities in the early stages because no matter what Dane will tell you, not all of them, uh, you know, will really uh, come through. So we need to have a lot of opportunities in the early stages, narrowing down towards a goal towards the end. So we have that, and that is great. But uh, I need to get a little bit more information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the underlying data that makes up these, these open opportunities chart. So um, charts in Microsoft CRM allow me to view the underlying data, and as you can see, there's a button in the middle that I'm going to click now. And this is going to pull up a list of records for me with the corresponding chart that I used in the middle. So I'm going to expand the screen so we can, we can all see it. So uh, I, I can see all the underlying data. Uh, I could apply some additional filters to it and, and re refresh the chart if I needed to learn something on a specific area. But at this point, I'm seeing I have a pretty healthy amount of um, opportunities in the qualified state. So let's say I need to drill, drill deeper into the, these opportunities and see what uh, opportunities I have. 
So I'm going to click on the chart, and I'm going to specify that I want to see uh, how these opportunities break down by owner. And I'm going to use a bar chart. And uh, maybe I need to, as a sales manager, I need to figure out who the owner is in order to work with this uh, owner in order to advance the opportunities uh, that are in the qualified stage. So I, I'm going to say OK here. And as you can see now, the, the, the grid uh, on the left side refre refreshed. And I'm seeing that all of these opportunities are owned by uh, John Lucas, since obviously this is demo data that we're looking at. Uh, and I want to drill down further then and see what customers these opportunities are for. So as you can see, I have uh, uh, unlimited drill-through capabilities here. Um, I'm going to go and take a look at potential customer. And again, keep the bar chart format. That should work for me. And I can see that the largest opportunity here is with variety stores. So uh, clearly this is a, the, uh, um, the opportunity that as I, as a sales manager, need to focus on to make sure that we can make our numbers. Um, okay, so um, this has, uh, uh, we have seen that we can, uh, with Microsoft CRM, we can uh, analyze the pipeline and get valuable information about the state of our business. So I'm going to back, go back to um, my dashboard and try to look at some, what other information I have. For example, I can see what are my top salespeople, and again, due to the demo data that we're working on, we only have one here, but if we have multiple uh, salespeople we would see, uh, in the sales leaderboard, what is our uh, um, salesperson that's produced the best results for us. Now, if I want to start um, asking questions about the effectiveness of my sales organization, I may want to look at my win-loss ratio, how many of the opportunities that we, we actually create in the system we manage to win. So our deals won versus deals lost uh, chart will give us this information, uh, summarizing the underlying uh, won and lost opportunities over the current fiscal period. Now, uh, with CRM 2011, one of the uh, new hiding capabilities uh, that uh, are included are around goal management. And the top two chart, percentage achieved and goal progress, uh, allow me to do just that. Uh, for example, I have set a goal for um, um, my, uh, everybody who reports to me uh, to uh, take a look at how many opportunities uh, they, uh, I expect them to sell over the current fiscal period. So in this, in this chart, and I'm going to expand it so we can see it better, we can see uh, what's our target? So the target is, is uh, $525,000. And what I can see that my actual is uh, 514. So we are already approaching that number uh, with opportunities that we have won in the current fiscal period. But I also have a pretty healthy amount of opportunities in progress that are, that are also scheduled uh, um, to close in the, the, in the current fiscal period. So if we manage to close uh, a small percentage of those will exceed our quota. So overall, we're in good shape. Now, if we have a larger number of users, I could also see if some of them uh, are not um, meeting their quotas, especially troublesome are situations where with everything that's already been closed in the current fiscal period and everything that's uh, in progress, we, we still can't make the quota. Uh, clearly, these are things that require our attention. So, so uh, with, with the dashboard in Microsoft CRM, I can get all this information. Um, if you're interested later, I, I can get back and talk a little bit about how a little bit about how we set up goals in Microsoft CRM and how we do, derive this information. Uh, but for now, I'm going to wrap it up and, and uh, um, give uh, the presentation back to Dan. Thanks, Yvonne. So again, as Dynamic CRM and we're finishing up the demo part of our presentation today, you can see the, the viability of the application and going through and working through not only your daily activities as a salesperson or a marketing individual or somebody in the customer service area, but really looking at the ability for management to make business decisions around forecasting, availability, probability of customers, and also being able to create workflows and processes to lock down the data and make sure that these things are followed through a systematic process company-wide. Um, so you know where everything's going with your organization from a sales perspective um, as well. So again, I'm going to close out of Dynamics Serum 2011 uh, at this point. Go back over to my PowerPoint. Hold on a second here.
break and be aware of this. Okay, great. So I'm back in our presentation. So I want to now talk about comparing and contrasting AX and dynamic CRM, and then going to the integration options that you have. Um, now, everybody on the phone, uh, unless you bought before 2007, has AX CRM. So now that this is a case to be made for organizations, it's not which application to use. Um, it could either be, do we need both of them, or does AX CRM not work for my business? So in order to make the business application, you really need to look at AX CRM and make sure it works for your organization. I will tell you with the advancement of AX 2009, the AX CRM application has added a lot of functionality that's very similar to dynamic CRM. Again, this is around lead versus opportunity management, the sales process workflows we discussed, the idea of activities, uh, doing campaign management and then blasting out emails in campaigns. Again, using SSRS and SSAS for reports and dashboards, you know, importing data easily through Excel, very similar functionality. What I want to look for a second here is at the differences. Um, now, there's not a lot uh, as an overall product goes, but there's some unique differences that I want to point out based on what you see here on the screen. Um, one of them is around, you know, looking at the customer support area. Now, a lot of companies who have AX say, well, yeah, it's got service. Well, that's service management. The idea of if you're creating a product or you have a piece of material that you're putting on a factory floor and you then have to service it once it's delivered to the customer. You know, you want to manage the bombs, the bombs, the delivery, the as is, the bill of materials, and be able to do repairs and returns around that piece of equipment. That's what service management is about. There is no pure customer service or call center type approach um, in AX CRM, but that is available in dynamic CRM. So again, one of the unique differences I want to point out here. The second one is around the product configurator. A lot of engineer to order companies have spent a lot of time in putting in AX and building their engineer to order process around product builder or econ and be able to build their models and spend a lot of time designing those. Um, we do have ETO customers using dynamic CRM, but often they don't replicate that same functionality out into the CRM application because it's just too difficult, but there are ways to do that. So a lot of engineer to order organizations that want to use dynamic CRM, use dynamic CRM for your op prospect, your opportunity management, but then they go to AX to actually quote out the uh, engineer to order product. So again, another thing to think about if you're an engineer to order uh, company. The third thing I want to point out here is the mobile. Um, about a year ago, uh, when I went to AXUG, about a week before that, I think in September, Microsoft just continued their servicing of the AX CRM mobile application that was available. Uh, and to come to the marketplace, I believe there's only one ISV that's come to the marketplace to really fill in that gap. But when it comes to mobile for the dynamic CRM application, there are a myriad of applications you can use, including the Mobile Express that comes free with the application. Uh, we worked with many ISV partners around BlackBerry, iPhone, uh, Droid, Internet Explorer-based apps. Um, but there's a lot more, lot more options for a field service or a field sales organization that your, that your company might be using. Now, these are functionality differences. Again, I talk to IT people, and they're like, well, functionality is pretty close. But let me show you where the difference really resides. And this is our observation of working with customers using both applications over the past seven years, is that the really big difference is not so much that the functionality is pretty close, is that the usability, and again, this harkens back to what I talked about at the beginning, the usability of not only the users, but the administrators of the systems, and the ability to have an innate experience that they're familiar with, which is around the Microsoft Office applications. If this gives you any indication, Dynamics CRM's R&D group is actually within Office at Microsoft, not within the Dynamics team. So it gives you the idea of how Microsoft's presenting the application and how it's looking for them to fit in their entire Office uh, schematic around ease of use, navigation, toolbars you're familiar with, and obviously the immune administration. As I also told you during the demo, AX customers are used to customizing X++, using SSRS, and using technical tools like that. The majority of dynamic CRM, once it's implemented, can be administrated with simple field ads, business analyst type skills, um, and not require any hard, co hard code core, um, hard, sorry, hardcore coding around dynamic CRM. So again, a, a very easy to use as opposed to AX CRM. Again, think about this as you're diagramming, whether you're looking at this product or any CRM product around user adoption. So again, the meat of the, the uh, presentation here is that we're talking about dynamic CRM, your dynamic AX customers, well, how do we integrate them? Well, there's not one, one solution for everybody. Now, we'll tell you in our experience, we've actually looked at integration advantages around bringing the data over, loading it from the initial load from ERP to CRM, you know, being able to do real-time and batch processing, uh, quote to order, which is obviously a process between the two applications. Any integration that you're looking for may want to be working in some of these areas, depending on your type of organizations. I've had customers that want to be able just to map fields. I've had people that actually want to do full business processes between the organizations and applications. 
So what are your options out there? Um, there are five in the marketplace that we're familiar with, and the first one being fairly new, in fact, new enough that it's not even here yet. The Microsoft Connector, uh, we're actually part of the beta team, as well as the Dynamics CRM 2011 beta team, but we're part of the beta team for the connector that Microsoft's putting out in the marketplace in December, which will be free to every AX customer out there to integrate Dynamics CRM. Uh, we looked at it a little bit, nothing really to tell you right now, the beta just started, but that is available free of charge come December. But we've worked with other products like BizTalk, Scribe, SSIS, and of course other custom integration like with AIF um, that you might go out there and do. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. So what I want to tell you about is a couple um, pieces of information about the Scribe connector, which is probably we use the most of. Um, it's cost effective. Um, it's a .NET SQL-based application that really creates integration between both systems, uh, AX and Dynamic CRM. And out of the box, it comes with a lot of the basic field mapping that you would expect for these two products around accounts and contacts and bi-directional capabilities, being able to take items and price lists, because obviously AX is where you own your prices and your products, and pushing them out to Dynamic CRM. On the opportunity side, to be able to share quotes and orders, as well as get those invoices put back in Dynamic CRM, so that when your sales or service rep is looking at a customer, they got a full experience of what the customer has bought from you, what orders they have opened, and obviously their current experiences with you. As most integrations do this, this is basically one for Scribe. So again, applying these applications. So I want to talk about two case studies where we took a business pain of our customer and really replicated and, and resolved it through the application of integrating these two solutions. So we are our first customer retail distributor. Um, they're a multi-channel distributor. They get emails, they get e-commerce, they get phone calls, they buy in the stores, uh, they get orders from all over the place. A very multi-channel based organization. Um, but all those orders are put directly to AX and ordered that way. What it didn't do is give the sales team the ability to look at who bought what, you know, where they're buying from, and look at demographics, be able to upsell and cross-sell those opportunities. Uh, if they're buying a certain product, could they buy this co-product uh, or similarly-based product and be able to market and be able to sell those our organizations. So they have that business pain. What we ended up doing is introducing Dynamic CRM to the organization um, using both BizTalk and AIF so that you can do batch um, I'm sorry, real-time integration for that piece of it so they were able to look at the, the, uh, the unique customers, you know, what they bought, what's going on, how they're working with them. And then on the scribe side, we used on a, on a batch process to look at the cataloging. They want to see the effectiveness of their catalogs, um, you know, who's buying what from which catalog, you know, what price was effective for, for what they're looking at, and really doing analytics uh, around the organization. What they were able to do, obviously, is get increased customer visibility, um, be able to upsell those customers, and get a full view of what somebody has bought. So if you're John Smith, you didn't just buy the one product. You bought these other three products. You looked at these other four products you've been marketed to. And really getting that full experience that they weren't get, getting out of AXCRM uh, before the integration. Another customer also in the distri distribution area, more of a business-to-business -business distributor, um, really dealt in catalogs. Their whole business is around going out there and sending out catalogs and tracking and hoping to track, obviously, the ability to, to look at the orders and find out which catalogs were effective. Well, using AX alone, they weren't able to do that. They didn't have the ability to track uh, which catalogs are being used to find out, you know, who's buying what products, what season they're buying it in, you know, where the product's positioned even on the page, and which catalogs are really not cost-effective. They should stop printing them because these were paper catalogs and very expensive to print. So we ended up using uh, the earlier version of Scribe by Selenia, uh, in which we were able to have the expanded field to integrate between AX and CRM. You know, out of the box, like I said, the field effectiveness and some of the, the workflows around adding a customer and adding a prospect were already in the product. We had the linking of mark campaigns uh, with the invoices so that we were able to see the, the tracking of, of the catalogs and what's going through. What they were able to do is reduce their catalog expense because they're finding which ones were effective or not, and then finding out which people are buying that way as opposed to buying other ways, either calling their rep or going through e-commerce. So, again, not only minimizing which catalogs are being sent, but which channel was being most effective for them based on the productivity of those orders coming through and tracking those back to the catalogs. So again, two good examples of taking what's familiar to you in AX and expanding that with the availability of dynamic CRM to take care of business issues as well. I mean, extending those ideas such as you want to be able to order a product, you want to see what inventory is available for you. You know, getting a good example of AX and dynamic CRM working together. Uh, we have AX customers that want to be able to turn off the credit management capability in AX because you're putting somebody on hold. Well, that will show up in Dynamic CRM real time so that you can't sell that person a product anymore because their credit's on hold. You know, simple business pains solved by integrating the two products together. So now you're asking, great, I have Dynamics AX. I like Dynamic CRM. I want to see more about it. Well, how do we move forward with it? 
So Green Beacon has a couple pilot programs that we work with for our customers to really go out there and help you develop, you know, you like dynamic CRM, you want to see if it's going to work within your organization. So there's two ways in which we build those pilot programs. One is a proof of concept of which we work with Microsoft with enterprise agreement customers uh, around doing a two-week discovery where we divide our costs by a third. And we come out with giving you a really good, you know, you know overview, uh, proof of concept around dynamic CRM with some basic workflows and data from your organization uh, so that you can actually go off and, um, and work with that as either a sandbox, because it does come with a couple of licenses, or an environment that you can work going forward. But again, getting you exposure to the product right away. For those that are not EA customers, we have our own pilot program, uh, which is simply a three-day discovery with two of our consultants, and we actually buy a server in Cal for you, uh, so that when we leave, you actually have an environment that you can use, um, which costs $5,000. So again, two ways to engage on a pilot side to really get an idea of dynamics here for your organization. So then purchase options that you're looking at. Again, mentioning there's both online and on-premise. A lot of people pushing to BPOS and the cloud and working within that. Microsoft just released a price discounting uh, right now for $34 per user per month for the online product. Again, same code base as on-premise, just different pricing costing model, obviously. And then after that, it's $44 per user per month. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, 2011 is coming out, and the release is actually first coming on the online version in January. For on-premise, um, again, if you're on an EA, there's a whole discussion to be had with your LAR. But if you're not an EA customer, you know, typical people buy dynamic CRM just like you would exchange with three, three years up front. And those are the prices. Again, we can come back and do all the calculations for you. But just give you an idea of the cost effectiveness of this. And again, that's three years. Of all the maintenance up front, you wouldn't pay another thing until the fourth year. So really a cost-effective solution if you were to do the math. Again, 2011 for on-premise is available in March. And I do want to tell everybody on the phone who's not an EA customer um, that if you are a dynamic CRM with us, we'll give you 20% off by the end of the year. Um, unfortunately, there's no way for us to discount the online purchase because that's a direct purchase. But for the on-premise, there's 20% available to buy dynamic CRM, whether you're buying five users or 50 users or 500 users. Applying the discount through the end of the year, working through us, either through our pilot program or in other methods we can talk about in a minute here. So next steps, and I feel that most people on the phone fall into three buckets. Uh, you're the seeing dynamic CRM for the first time, and you're going out and investigating it. Well, the best way to investigate is to start working with it. Um, and so you can contact Brian, and Brian will set up one of two trials, in most cases the first trial, which is the online trial, um, unfortunately, for dynamic CRM 2011. It is available through its release in January, so that's a, a running clock right now. But that's actually a trial demo that's available from now until about mid-January. Uh, which we can set up in the matter of a couple hours and give you access to your own environment where you can load data in, add, uh, add up to five users, and be able to play with that system for a period of a couple months. The other option is the 90-day trial of Dynamics Serum 2011 on-premise, uh, which is the other option you can work for. Again, you would have to set up a server or a laptop. We'd load this application on there, and you'd have 90 days to work with it uh, on-premise. So, again, the product's right in front of you. Unlike when you bought AX, you can play with it right away. The idea of here is getting in your hands, molding it, and working with it, as opposed to sending you down this entire process before you actually get to see product. Again, if you're looking to build a business case, I can assist you with that with either the pilot options we have or giving you some ideas about building your business case and finding you know, where you're, actually, you're going to get across your organization to actually go out and purchase Dynamics CRM. Again, if you're ready to prepare and purchase, you've, you've, you've looked at it, you've evaluated it, you're just waiting for the new release to come out or the Connect to come out, I'll give you the full pricing, either I can contact your LAR or I can work on um, giving you direct value pricing. And then we can also do implementation cost um, analysis with our delivery team. So again, three different ways that you guys on the phone can work with us today. Well, at this point in the conversation, I'm going to open up the floor to any questions that people may have uh, regarding what they've seen today. Again, uh, everybody on the phone is muted. And so what I would ask, if you do have to ask a question, is that you, you unmute your phone by pressing star six. And then when you're done asking the question, hitting star six again to read it. Go ahead. So if you have any questions, press press star six, please. Any questions from anybody? Hi, this is David Wheeler. Um, have you implemented um, CRM to AX where there's multiple 
business units in AX? I will definitely check on that. I know both examples I gave you are in a multi-company environment, so they have one. You know, one company is a B two C and B two C is B two B and B two C is separated. Um, so I know we've done that before, um, but I have to. I'll get that information for you. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Well, great. Uh, well, thank you, for everybody, for joining us today. Again, this is going to be recorded, so if you want to look at it again, we'll probably get out to you by Friday or so. Um, and maybe we'll run another webinar probably next week, um, as there's a bunch of attendees that couldn't make it today. Um, so we'll let you know if that comes out again, so we'll do another live presentation. Again, thank you, for everyone, for your time today, and have a good rest of the day. Thank you.